Hey guys, it's Sunday uh, evening. Uh, it's September the 4th. It's about 5.40 in the evening. I just got a no cool call that came in and uh, I recognize this uh, customer's name and address. I've been here before. Uh, I was there, he said about two months ago. I don't, I don't remember what I did. He doesn't remember what I did. But uh, he said that it's blowing hot air. The, the blower's blowing inside, but the condensing unit's not coming on, I think he said. Or I don't know. Maybe, no, he didn't specify if the, if the condenser was coming on. He just said it was blowing hot air. So it could, you know, we all know that that could be a number of things. We could have anything, you know, from a con condenser that's not coming on due to a capacitor, contactor, float switch, something like that. Or we could have a condenser fan motor running with no compressor. I mean, there's just too many things to say of what, of why it could be blowing hot air. But we will find out shortly when we get there. We've got about a, about a 20 minute ride, it says. He, uh, he lives out in the next town over from me. Uh, wow, I guess I wouldn't really call it a town, but you know, cause I live out here in a little country town called Colleen, Louisiana. And then he's over in DeVille, Louisiana. But DeVille is pretty big, and it, but it's all out in the country, so he could be down some back roads. I'm trying to remember exactly where his house is at, but I'm drawing a blank. But I, I'll recognize it once I get there. All right, guys, and we'll see y'all when we get there. All right, guys, I'm on the job site. We got a Goodman. Uh, having a hard time getting somebody to answer the door. The homeowner's not here, but I think he said his daughters were supposed to be here, but nobody's answering the door. But if you look right there, you can see the suction line has got some ice on it. And if you look down there, you can see the ice on the compressor and on the suction line down in there. Uh, looks like somebody's pulling up. I'll get right back to y'all. All right, guys. Well, uh, nothing we could do, as you can see. It was frozen. And, you know, and I clearly asked the guy, I said, before I drive all the way out there, you know, you owe me an overtime service call because it's a holiday today. By the way, I hope everybody had a great Labor Day. And uh, I clearly asked him if the unit was frozen. And he told me no. I, I said, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. He goes, you mean is there ice on the pipe and all that? I was like, yes, sir. He said, no, it's not frozen. Okay. Uh, maybe it wasn't, but I, I don't know if his daughter and our son and daughter-in-law tried running it or what, but I, I don't know. I went inside and uh, it, it, it's a mobile home. You know, I do a lot of mobile homes. There's a lot of mobile homes out in the country. And uh, the Mortex coil was thick, very thick and ice. Uh, now the system was off when I got there, but I think they had just turned it off when I told them I was on the way. So the, you know, I told them I'd be back tomorrow uh, now, one, a few things I was able to get off of it was I could, I, it's a 410A system, which is good. And uh, the Mortex coil is in horrible condition. I could see that the plate was rusty and the, uh, you know, the center piece, the triangle piece, it's all rusted out. More than likely that Mortex coil is leaking. Uh, and we'll, and you know, since it's 410, we'll, if that is what the issue is, we'll just replace his Mortex coil and he should be good to go. But, uh, you know, the Goodman, cause the Goodman condensers weren't bad. I never really had many issues with the condensers. Uh, it was, it was the, uh, the evaporators that I had trouble with. So, and it's 410A, so that's good. And, uh, we'll just replace the Mortex coil. All right, we will get back to y'all tomorrow when when I get back over here to finish seeing what's going on. All right, guys, we're back over here the next day. You can see the Mortex calls in really rough shape. I think I figured out why it froze up. There's the filters. But I'm going to go ahead and run the lead detector in here and see if, the, if it hits off. All right, we're picking up one refrigerant leak right here.
all I've really picked up so far. That's good enough for me. Coil's extremely dirty anyway, and it's leaking, so it needs to be replaced. We'll go ahead and fire it up and uh, see how low it is. Uh, but I don't even know if I'll be able to get. I mean, it's not completely clogged up, but it's dirty. All right, guys, the uh, the charge doesn't look horrible. Um, about about eight degrees of superheat, which is probably which is a little low. And you know, because our evaporator is, is not caked up and blocked off solid, but it is dirty. Um, and it, you know, it looked like it was, I, I thought it was gonna be overcharged there for a minute, but it, it really, the coil needs to be pulled out and cleaned. Actually, it needs to be replaced because it's got a refrigerant leak. You know, uh, we did verify that it's got a leak. Uh, I think, you know, the only thing, the only reason I could see of why it froze up was because of those filters. As you saw earlier, the filters were really dirty. I'm going to bring all that to his attention between the fil the filters, the dirty coil, and the refrigerant leak in the coil. I'm going to recommend a replacement, an, an evaporator replacement. Condenser seems to be fine. It needs to be cleaned up also. So I'm going to recommend a con a evaporator replacement with a condenser cleaning and service and we'll see which way he wants to go with it <laughs> 